Hey everyone, welcome to Mr. Kenny's Ancient History class. Today we're going to be talking about the First Triumvirate and the Dictator for Life. Hmm. So, we left off talking about three individuals. Uh, Pompey, Crassus, and Caesar. Now, before we get too far onto this, I do want to tell a little story about Julius Caesar that... Um, I really liked P Caesar was a um a really likable guy. He was considered the life of the party often. Um uh, many Roman senators hated him because he was um had such a great personality that often their wives would um want to go out on dates with Caesar and uh he'd go to a party and then leave with a you know, a senator's wife. Um uh, but that's not the story that I'm talking about here. Uh, just an example of how likable Caesar was. Um, when Caesar was younger, he was captured by pirates. And um, pirates were a real thing, and they were going to hold him ransom. And they said, oh, well, uh, we're going to go and charge you charge a thousand denarii for your return. And Caesar says, a thousand? I am a patrician. I'm worth at least 20,000. And then the pirates say, oh, well, okay, we'll uh, ransom you for 20,000. And Caesar goes with these pirates, and they're sailing in the Mediterranean Sea, and Caesar becomes friends with them. And he'd joke and be like, ha ha, that's so funny. But when this is all over, I'm going to hunt you down and crucify all of you. And then they'd be like, oh, Caesar, you're hilarious. And, you know, they would go just enjoy each other. But then um, Caesar did come back after he was rescued and did hunt those pirates down and did have them crucified. So we're going to see Caesar was very likable, but also very, very scary. So what happened was Caesar, um, Pompey, and Crassus are going to form an alliance. You see, Caesar and Pompey were the two most powerful generals in Rome. Crassus wanted to be a powerful general, but Crassus was there because Crassus was very rich. And the three of them formed what was called the Triumvirate, where basically you have three people ruling equally, and they circumvented um, the Senate. They made sure that one of them was always consul or proconsul for a powerful region, uh, breaking the law time and time again. When senators wanted to go against it, they threatened them, often with force, because they are the strongest generals there. Uh, they would bribe senators with Crassus's money. And this was a huge deal. These three people dominated Rome for a decade. Now, a triangle is one of the strongest shapes ever created. What happens when one of those pieces breaks? Crassus wanted the glory that Caesar and Pompey did. He goes and starts a war with the Parthians. The Parthian Empire was the Persian Empire that existed during the time of Rome. We talked about the Persians a lot in our Greece unit. Crassus picks a fight with an equal power, and Crassus is killed. This is going to end the First Triumvirate. Now, Pompey and Caesar were related um, through marriage. You see, Caesar's daughter married Pompey, even though she was like 30, 40 years younger than him. Poor girl. So, that's not going to be enough, though. Because Pompey was older than Caesar. Pompey was yesterday's hot new general. Caesar was today's. So Pompey starts talking to the Senate, the same Senate that he had bullied, the same Senate that refused to pay his soldiers and said, you know, this Caesar guy is becoming really dangerous. We need to bring him back to Rome without his army. Because the army is what gave Caesar the power. So Caesar has a choice. He can come back to Rome without an army, which of course then he's going to be arrested and he's going to be done politically. Or he can go back to Rome with an army and start a civil war. We get to this tiny little river called the Rubicon. We, it's so small we don't even know where exactly it is today. But the Rubicon was the traditional point at which an a general would tell his army to go home. Caesar doesn't. 
Caesar crosses the Rubicon. He feignlessly says, the die is cast. I have crossed the Rubicon, meaning he had done something he can't take back. He brought an army into the territory of the Roman city. This is going to start a civil war. So, the Senate sides with Pompey. Pompey immediately leaves Rome. It's because Pompey had less soldiers, but Pompey had a lot of allies. Pompey builds up. And they go, and they battle. They battle, they battle. And in the first major battle, Caesar winds up losing, actually. He tries the trick he did with the Gauls of surrounding a larger army with his small army, but Pompey knew Caesar's playbook. And went and rebelled against. And this is where I really wish I had a whiteboard, because I usually dry out some of these battles, uh, particularly the Battle of Pharsalus, where Pompey, um, he is winning the war. Caesar's running out of water and supplies, but the senators want Pompey to strike, because each day that Caesar is out there, each day the war goes on, it costs the senators money. It costs the senators glory. So they kept on telling Pompey, you need to go out there and battle Caesar. You've already beaten him once. You could beat him again. Pompey says, no, I'm going to win this war just by having Caesar run out of food and water because you can't have an army if they don't have food and water. Senators then start to tease Pompey. They say, are you too old? Are you too afraid to fight? So... The Battle of Pharsalus. Pompey tries to do what Caesar did, encircling him, but Caesar saw it coming and defeats Pompey. Pompey survives the battle and flees to Egypt, where there's a man named Ptolemy the Thirteenth, who happens to be having a bit of a tiff with his sister. You may have heard of her, Cleopatra. Well, Ptolemy the Thirteenth wants to have Caesar on his side, so when his men go and see Pompey coming and begging for an audience. They say, oh yeah, come on. Uh, and they promptly kill Pompey. Ptolemy actually is going to give Pompey's severed head to Caesar, which Caesar is furious because Caesar was famous for not only being very strong, very powerful, very scary. I told you the pirate story. But he also often pardoned his enemies a way to show power, a way to go and say, I'm above this, a way to earn favor. But Caesar was robbed of that chance to pardon Pompey because Pompey was killed. And he's angry at Ptolemy the Thirteenth. He winds up meeting his sister Cleopatra the Seventh. yes, the famous Cleopatra, and they wind up going and working together to get rid of Ptolemy the Thirteenth. And of course, uh, Cleopatra and Caesar will have a son. Vina Vidi Vici. I came, I saw, I conquered. Caesar continued to fight the civil wars, defeating the rest of Pompey's and the Senate's allies, and he winds up coming home to Rome victorious. Caesar rules Rome and declares himself dictator for life. These are all just fun facts. You don't have to worry about it too much. So dictator for life. Um, and Caesar, he immediately starts making changes to help the people of Rome. He wants to go and make the plebeians have more rights, more say. And remember, they're his soldiers. They're the people loyal to him. They are his bread and butter. Senators don't like this. Now, here's some of the reforms that Caesar did. First off, he gets rid of the debt of many of the people. Now think about it. The patricians are the people that are owed the money. They want that money back. But Caesar says, no, we're not going to let you have it. He then uses his own money to go and build buildings, to give entertainment to the people of Rome. He goes and gives land to his soldiers. He takes land from his enemies, much like many other Romans had done, Sulla and Marius before, and then goes and gives it to his army. Remember, that's what Tiberius and Gaius Gracchus wanted to do, and they were killed by the Senate for this. He also makes more people Roman citizens. 
that Roman citizenship was a very valuable thing, a very big right, and he extends that citizenship. So the people love Caesar. The people accept the Senate, of course. Now, the Ides of March, you may have heard of March 15th. Caesar is told to beware this, the legend says. Um, Mark Antony hears of this conspiracy to assassinate Caesar. He tries to get to Caesar. He tries to stop them. But the senators stop Mark Antony from getting there. And Caesar actually goes and enters the Senate building from a side door. Mark Antony is not able to stop his dear friend from being killed. And that, unfortunately, is what happens. He's stabbed perhaps 21, 23 times on the House of the Senate floor. Each senator made sure to stab him. Now, one of the people that took part in this conspiracy was a senator named Marcus Junius Brutus, which, if you did your optional reading there, you remember he was the one who killed Tarquin the Proud, or excuse me, got rid of Tarquin the Proud, did not kill, exiled. And you see... Brutus was supposedly a friend of Caesar, and we have, of course, that famous saying from uh, the play Shakespeare, or uh, the play of Shakespeare, Julius Caesar, "E tu, Brute, and you, Brutus," um, also going and joining in the murder of Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar is dead, but the Republic is also going to die with him. We're going to see a second triumvirate after this, which we'll talk about next time. Probably next week we'll get to that one. You're going to see Rome is going to never be the same. The Republic is dead. Long live the Empire. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, share. Um, it'd be really cool to pass some more history around. You guys have a wonderful day. I miss you all. Talk to you later. Bye.